Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 19th of October 2011. I got an email yesterday from Papa Valium showing me that there was a comet that I'd missed in the uh, C3 chronograph data, and indeed there is. But first, our trivia question. Today is the 74th anniversary of the death of Lord Rutherford, who is considered the father of nuclear physics, and he won a Nobel Prize for his work in that field. In which country was he born? In which country did he do the work that won him the Nobel Prize? And in which country is he buried? The answer will be given at the end. With the loss of those five active regions over the west limb yesterday, the X-ray background seems to have decayed somewhat to about the B7 level. And in that time we've only had one rather odd looking sea flare. And that was from the large region oh, coming over and that was from the large region coming over the northeast limb, region 1324. Currently we have seven officially numbered spot regions on the disk, but there are three as yet unnumbered regions on the disk as well one of which could become a very big region. So let's start looking at regions in detail with the regions in the northwest, regions 1314 and 1319. Region 1314 doesn't seem to have changed a great deal since yesterday. However, region 1319 continues its steady development, although it has not produced any sea flares in the last 24 hours. Next we'll turn to their twin regions in the southern hemisphere, regions 1316 and 1317. Both, to me, seem to have decayed slightly overnight and have not produced any significant activity. 1321 to their east seem to have developed steadily overnight, however still not really a major region. And there is a new region coming up to its east, uh, visible here on the left. Again, it's a relatively modest region. Region 1323 is not a particularly exciting region at the moment, so let's go straight to region 1324 near the east limb. And this is proving to be a very complicated region, with a large number of spots spread over a large area. And interestingly, right on the northeast limb, there is a new, rather large spot coming over right now. And we'll have to wait for a day or two to see how complex that region is. These are the remnants of region 1302 and 1305. In the sunspot and magnetic movies, I think you should probably concentrate on regions 1319 and the new region 1324 to see how they developed over the last 24 hours. The kind folks at NASA have pointed me at a new source of data for the AIA instruments. It seems to be a lot more reliable than the Sun Now page. So here is a video of the transition region, helium-2304, followed by a video of the low temperature coronal line at 171 angstroms. I would follow the activity in both wavelengths along this uh, long filament that is uh, crossing the center of the disk from the northeast to the southwest, just following up behind regions 1314 and 1319. There seems to be a lot of activity along it, and at one stage, at least in the helium-2 image, there seems to be a partial liftoff. Also notice on the uh, east limb the large loops that are sticking up above the limb. In the high temperature coronal image, take a look at this bow-shaped coronal hole that's just crossing this center. That means in two or three days time, that region is going to start to affect the Earth with a high speed solar wind stream. So in that stage, we should expect the solar wind speeds to pick up. The coronal mass ejections continue on as a pace, but let's take a look at the comet um, that I mentioned at the beginning. Here is a diagram showing its location. It's coming in at about 5 o'clock on the image, which makes it probably a member of the Crutz family of comets, which we've talked about before. So probably within the next 24 hours, it's going to get close to the sun and be evaporated away into dust. The ACE data shows us that the parameters of the solar wind remain remarkably constant for the last 24 hours in density, temperature and velocity, until about an hour ago when there was a sudden jump in the velocity. The high energy electron flux at geosynchronous altitudes has remained relatively stable and we've had no proton events in the last 24 hours. The auroral zone looks very similar to what it did yesterday, as is in fact the KP index, and NOAA has not issued any space weather warnings in the last day. So in summary then, the X-ray background has fallen to the B7 level, the sunspot number is at 155, the radius sun intensity is at 153 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has increased to 420 km per second, with a density of less than one proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions remain quiet. With the large and complex regions coming over the northeast limb, I'm going to keep my forecast very similar to what it was before, namely that C flares are certain, M flares are likely, and X flare is even possible, sunspot number will remain high, 
Coronal mass ejections are very likely, the solar wind speed will remain low, and it's unlikely that we're going to get a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours. Okay, in the slightly longer term, in a couple more days, there'll be another region coming over the northeast limb. As for the answer to our trivia question, Ernest Rutherford was born in New Zealand. He did his Nobel Prize winning work in Canada, and he's buried in Westminster Abbey in London, so the last answer is Great Britain. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.